Hello and welcome to the Blockade Runner podcast number 257. My name is John. Joining me again is Ryan. What's up, Ryan? We're back. We are back. Yeah, back and better than ever like Wat Tambor. It's been a long time, Ryan. It has. It's been a real long been time. A yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, we got to try to remember how to do this. Uh I feel a little rusty. Not not totally sure I know how to do this anymore, but I'm going to give it a uh give it my best shot tonight. Um we of course took most of the summer and fall off from doing the podcast because there was this big strike going on and we were trying not to step on any anyone's toes as far as that goes. Be supportive and um, and not cross that uh, figurative picket line, so to speak, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, we did one episode, which we thought would be okay to do, um, talking to Chris Baker about his Star Wars video game retrospective book. Mm-hmm. Um, but like really since, God, I don't know, what, June or July? Um, we've just done that one episode, so it's yeah. been almost almost half of a year off so it goes (laughs) (laughs) so it goes okay all right yeah um so we're back and we're back just a few days before christmas here and uh just a few days before the end of of 2023 and um you know we're we're gonna do a little bit of a holiday um focused episode tonight because we both just watched the documentary a disturbance in the force um, a documentary about the Star Wars holiday special. So mm-hmm. figured that'd be a good occasion to come back and do maybe one last episode here in 2023. And uh, perhaps at the end of the show, we'll we'll talk about some resolutions for 2024. Um, mm. By which I just mean like maybe some some plans <laughs> for yes. some, some very tentative plans for 2024. So um but yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll go ahead and jump into the the Star Wars um, holiday special, not the holiday special itself, a disturbance in the Force, the documentary about that holiday special. Um, I'm wearing, I don't know if you can tell Ryan, but I'm wearing um, a very holiday special themed or Star Wars holidays themed outfit here. Mm. Um, I'm wearing my my like Star Wars um, holiday sweater, which um, you can kind of see if you're watching the video. I mean, it looks pretty fresh, right? Mm-hmm. And And I'm also wearing um, a Boba Fett, um, the cartoon from the holiday special, the Nirvana cartoon. I'm wearing a t-shirt featuring that. Mm -hmm. I've never, I haven't seen that before. That's cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. What um, Star Wars holiday special inspired um, gear are you wearing tonight, Ryan? Um, I am wearing my uh, written and directed by Ryan Johnson shirt. Okay. Nice. Okay. Sweet. I didn't, uh, I don't think I knew you had that. Yeah. Um, it looks like it's like, uh, is it a play on Scream? The movie Scream? Yeah. Is that what's going on yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's from the, I guess, what is it? Scream 5, Scream Reboot, Just Scream, uh-huh. Scream 2019, I don't know, whatever. Um, but yeah, there's the whole, uh, the whole Ryan Johnson Knives Out guy. Um, yeah, stories. talking about the that was the one where they were talking about requels right a requel yeah 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 um, yeah that was cool for a minute there when scream was back and scream was cool and not being totally shitty remember that <laughs> yep it was an exciting year <laughs> yeah uh okay all right well uh let's go ahead and get into discussing um a disturbance in the force Mm-hmm. the uh the star wars holiday special documentary ryan you bought the blu-ray right i did yep yeah i bought the blu-ray too but then i ended up having to watch it um on streaming so i have not watched the blu-ray yet um and i know there's some bonus features and stuff on there so i'm excited to check that out but uh i've not been able to yet mm, i didn't dig into any of the bonus stuff um on there i just uh-huh. watched the documentary so i can't gotcha. speak to it yeah, I mean, I assume there's bonus stuff on there anyway. Uh-huh. I I'm trying to think because it's it seemed pretty bare bones. Um, okay, just going by the the menu, but um, I I mean, I also didn't really search around in there. I just hit play. And... Yeah, well, um, the documentary is available uh, to stream all over the place. It's um, five bucks to rent. 
on like Amazon and um, Apple TV. I rented it on Apple TV. All those places you can you can rent it there. Um, you can buy it for ten bucks on Apple TV, so that's a pretty good deal. Or the mm-hmm. Blu-rays, maybe I think around twenty-five bucks or so. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, and I missed out on the opportunity actually to uh, to see it at um, Alamo. There's an Alamo in Wrigleyville in Chicago now, and oh, uh, it, it, I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah, yep, yep. So and it was playing there um, a couple times, but uh, it sold out right away, or it sold out before I knew about it. So all yeah. all the screenings were uh, were sold out. So yeah, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't even know it existed until like i think i found out that it existed on social media or something and then like the next like within like a couple days you sent a picture to our star wars group chat of like you holding the blu-ray and i was like oh Mm. this is a thing you can buy so i just ordered it right away yeah right on right on um so uh well let's just talk about um kind of impressions overall here and then we can we can get into uh some of our uh, some of the more interesting moments i suppose but uh how did you how did you find the documentary overall ryan um i think for people like us um there's not a ton of new ground tread in this documentary um like you know we we all kind of know that you know the the holiday special is infamous it's goofy it's um kind of hard to watch uh but also has like some cool stuff some you know meme stuff to it um we know we know like a little bit about the context it was produced in um so there wasn't like a ton of like huge revelations in this for me but what makes this documentary really good is it contextualizes the the holiday special um really well like the just the environment that allowed something like this to happen um and i think it it like it approaches it um like in a in a very sequential way that really does kind of tell um the full story and and there there is also just a lot of really good interview subjects that um can give like firsthand accounts of it so um yeah i think it really uh i think that's probably the biggest strength of this documentary is the way it you know explains and contextualizes the holiday special yeah, that is well said. I totally agree. Um, there was a few moments where I was watching it and I was thinking like, um, you know, this is really well put together and it's good material for sure. But um, kind of in the beginning, especially when it was sort of setting up like 1977 and 1978 and, you know, mm-hmm. Charlie Lippincott's going to conventions and marketing the movie this way and stuff like that. It was like, yeah. um, well, well told and important information for sure. But part of me was thinking like, uh, well, I do see this and like, a lot of star wars documentaries where like you know this is very well tread ground and i'm very familiar with it um but i think it needs to be in there you know because um hopefully a lot of people will watch the documentary that are not as familiar with that stuff and and it should be in there and and they did a good job of of retelling that but but um no i'm 100 percent with you i I was most fascinated by the documentary when they were talking uh or when they were focused on variety shows and Mm -hmm. you know the the context of what was television like in the 1970s in america because that is the environment that you know produced this really Mm -hmm. weird um star wars holiday special you know and so uh yeah i agree and and so once it got into the process of um you know started to focus on the process of of the the holiday special being put together and you know what, how Lucasfilm was involved and and the other um, producers and, and writers and stuff. Um, you know, it, it I was a, a little more engaged, and then um, especially too when they started to focus on specific segments and uh, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, it was good. That was the deep dive I was looking for. You know, yeah. into the holiday special, right? So, um, yeah. And as you said, there's some great interview subjects um, in there too. So, 
yeah, it was, uh, it, it's, it's really, really good. I, I highly recommend it for, uh, anyone listening to this podcast for sure. So, um, yeah, yeah. I was feeling like a little apprehensive when I first, like when it first started and you know, you, you have, you know, kind of the, the usual su- suspects of like who you would get to, who like who in Hollywood would you get to talk about the the Star Wars holiday special like you'd get like Seth Green and Kevin Smith and Pat Oswalt and like um you know and a, a welcome edition was Weird Al um which <laughs> which made me very happy but you're like oh no is this going to be people just like talking about how it sucks and how you know everyone was like let down by it and like what's the deal with this and like it, it kind of does that for a minute but then it like like you were saying like it goes into like much more interesting territory and um and also like brings in people who were you know actually involved um with the creation of it who we don't really hear from um you know very often in star wars like behind the scenes conversations yeah that's totally true and actually um you know one thing i really liked about it as well is that i feel like the people who tell the story of the star wars holiday special you know the 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 people who get the voice of telling the story in this documentary are the writers and the people for the most part who seem to have some affection or some level of like Pride isn't the right word because like mm-hmm. everybody's sort of like, yeah, it's not, you know, the most successful thing ever <laughs> or what, you know what I mean? Like nobody's like yeah. trying to present it as like this amazing achievement or anything, but, um, you know, there's a world in which a documentary exists like this, that it is just people dunking on it, you know, for an hour and a half mm-hmm. and being snarky and, you know, that would not be interesting to me at all. And, uh, I, you know, I, I really liked, um, the earnestness and the honesty and the like defensiveness isn't the right word, but there were people who worked on this, who were telling this story, who wanted to, you know, express the positive things about like what this thing is and their experience making it. And, you know, like, um, I just, I, I'm glad that it wasn't just, um, Hollywood comedians, taking pot shots at it or people from Lucasfilm. I don't, I mean, they wouldn't do that, you know, but like people from Lucasfilm, George, for instance, you know, just talking about what a disaster it is or, you know, it it wasn't that kind of thing. It was definitely more, um, like I said, the people who, who made it, um, having a voice to kind of talk about how it happened and why it is the way it is and what they were trying to accomplish and what the challenges that were that they faced, but also, to yeah. look back on it with some fondness at and and some some positivity about their experience making it so um that all comes through i think and and makes it uh, a much more interesting and less predictable you know sort of like little entertainment documentary yeah and i think just to go back to you know what we've already mentioned a few times um the the context is so key and you know i think um you know, you you and I, we we weren't even born when the holiday special originally aired, um, so we definitely didn't, we weren't familiar with all like those sort of variety shows that predated it. Um, like, like I I I know you know in like in passing what like the Donnie and Marie show was. But, like, I never, you know, I I never watch that or anything. So, um, yeah, so I think, like, the, that, that history alone was, like, invaluable, um, to me. Like, I was, you know, I was watching that part and I was like, oh, this would be, this would be cool to like show this section to like my mom who doesn't like care about star Wars at all, but you know, knows those variety shows and who, um, those, you know, different performers and actors and everyone is from that era. 
Um, so, yeah, I thought, like, that stuff was so good. Um, and, you know, I, I don't think anyone in the documentary or, like, you know, the people behind it or anything was, like, really, you know, trying to make excuses for for it but i mean they they really did face a lot of challenges um within the production um you know i think having you know like george being there at the beginning of it and having like a vision and you know they talk about like the the people who made it like they had one day with George Lucas and you know they spent 12 hours and talked through everything and then from there you know they he went off to work on Empire Strikes Back and they were just kind of left to their own devices and then suddenly like the you know the studio starts you know interfering and then there's like you know, push and pull through various um, creative folks um, involved in it um, with, like, their vision, and George is just gone at this point. And so they just, like, you know, have to have to make this thing happen one way or another. Um, so it really does kind of explain, like, what you know, why it is the way it is. And, you know, people on there, again, you have to think about, like, the time period and the context because this was a, t a time where, you know, and is still the case in Hollywood that, you know, people, you don't always get to work on your, like, brilliant passion project sometimes you're just like working on something to pay the bills and it needs to have like a quick turnaround and you know in this time period this is before you know like what we call like prestige tv like there were very few examples of like really high quality television programming um at the time like that was the that was the domain of the cinema um you know, and television was, like, a disposable thing that you don't, you didn't have to commit to that, you know, would, I think they described it in there as, like, something, like, these kind of variety shows are something that would, you know, be watchable by the whole family, but not really please anyone. <laughs> Right, like it's not designed for any one member of the family, right? It's not uh it's not gonna be like any one person's favorite thing, but it'll have enough in there for everybody that they'll all come together and watch it together, right? Yeah. I mean yeah. that's the you know, I guess the variety part of it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um Yeah, I think uh like you said before too, that context of just um understanding a little more of what the world was like at that time, uh, the, the television world was like at that time is, is really valuable. And also, you know, they, they really went into how much Star Wars was kind of like all over the place at the time in terms of marketing. And so that's a huge factor too, because it's like, you know, out of context, you sort of, you look at this Star Wars holiday special and think like, oh, I, who let this happen? It's crazy. It's such a disaster. It's so weird, you know, whatever. Uh, and it is kind of all those things. But, um, you know, when they show the clips of the Donnie and Marie show and they show the clips of, like, the Burger Chef commercials and Mark Hamill showing up on the Bob Hope show and, you know, all this stuff that was going on, it's like it was in some ways par for the course, you know, considering all the all the marketing stuff they were they were doing with Star Wars um, with both the characters and the actors, you know, so. Yeah, and it was, you know, it was like the the second blockbuster of that era um, after Jaws, and there was, you know... Star the, Wars was the second blockbuster, yeah. you're saying? Not this holiday special? No. no. Okay, Star gotcha. Wars was, um, and... 
and there was like that question of like you know there the no one could have predicted it would become like the the media empire that it's become and there was like that chance of like hey this this movie did really well everyone's talking about it until the next movie comes along whatever the next yeah. jaws or the next star wars is it's it's certainly not going to be star wars 2 <laughs> like yeah um, and so it's like yeah and there was this talk of like the studio being like people are going to forget about it if you don't have something like if you don't have these people on tv all the time and um and all this so it was you know it was hey. still like the wild west of blockbuster filmmaking yeah, so speaking of it being like the Wild West, um, <laughs> I need to track down whatever this, excuse me, uh, I need to check down whatever this Darth Vader meets the Wolfman thing is. Did you catch that? Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what is Darth Vader meets the Wolfman? Yeah. I need to know. Um, yeah. I feel like that doesn't exist anywhere if it was like a TV special or I don't know what it was, if it, if it even ever happened, but that would have to be something we'd know about and would have seen and people would be talking about if it was like, if it existed. Right. I mean, I don't know. Is it on YouTube? Yeah. I haven't looked yet, but, uh, that was something where I was like, Oh wow. Okay. Well mm -hmm. that's, uh, learning about that. If it, if it exists is probably worth the price of the, the documentary right there, you know? Um, yeah. so yeah, but, um, yeah, I think, uh, I guess like, well, I want to kind of go back to uh, the the earlier portion of the documentary here, um, the earlier part of the narrative of this documentary, because one thing that I found, uh, I'm glad they took the time to discuss, and, and I was interested to hear some of these voices talking about, is how difficult it was to see this Star Wars holiday special. Because as we know, it just aired the one time in 1978, I think Black Friday 1978. So if you didn't watch it that night, it was really, really difficult to track down. Um, and, you know, I first heard about it probably in the late 90s or something, at which point mm -hmm. there was, you know, plenty of like bootlegs of it floating around and stuff. I don't know when I first saw it, probably around that time um, somewhere. But uh point I'm trying to make, I guess, is like 1981, let's say, 1984, you're a Star Wars fan. Like, I feel like it was more of a like, a mythic thing that would be tough to actually get your hands on. Um, and that is part of why it has this like reputation, this mystique part of why I guess it's so, you know, a lot of people, I'm, I, well, I'll just say this cause I don't really like the star Wars holiday special that much. Like no. <laughs> there's parts of it that I, I, that, that I like a lot, but there's a lot of it that like is really kind of creep me out or makes me feel really weird. And like, I just, mm -hmm. I don't know. I like to watch like little segments here and there, but the the last time I tried to watch it from beginning to end, it was a major struggle. I, I have to say. Yeah. Um, so, but anyways, the, the like the fact that it was so difficult to find. Um, who was it? Uh, I can't remember who said it, but somebody said um, the Zapruder film was easier to find than the holiday special. Um, the Zapruder film being like home video footage of the JFK assassination, you know. So mm. like, uh, yeah, it was it was one of those things where. Um, the absence of the holiday special, I think is why it has such, you know, a huge reputation now. Um, and they, they did devote some time to, to telling that story, which I found pretty interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just before we move on, um, I did look on YouTube. There is, um, a video, uh, that was posted five days ago with 63 views um, of Darth Vader meets the Wolfman. No and way. It's Darth Vader stops by the Midnight Special while Wolfman Jack is hosting in 1977. Okay. All right. It's Wolfman. A, Wolfman Jacks. It's just um a minute long clip. Okay. But gotcha. Gotcha. That okay. that does exist though. All right. So. Interesting. I'll have to check that out. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I mean, I think so all all Wolfmans. Are good wolf mans. Yeah, but it's not like Abbott and Costello meet the wolf man or something. No, you know? it's not the universal monster one. Gotcha. Okay. Cool, cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, uh, I don't know when the appropriate time to bring it up is, but um, well, first off, Gilbert Gottfried was like my favorite part of the documentary. I feel like um, oh, yeah. He, on there. yeah, he was pretty funny. He was cracking me up for sure. Um, <laughs> in my notes, I wrote he was, and I underlined it, doing material. Like he, he's yeah. like, this is. <laughs> he was I'm gonna doing do a, a bit. Yeah, like, I'm gonna do. <laughs> he's like yep. this. This thing sucks so bad. Why wasn't I in it? <laughs> it, it, <laughs> yeah. was a, it was a full on bit. Yeah, uh, I respect that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was pretty funny, mm-hmm. and I, I wrote his name down and wrote positive comments about him a few times um, in my notes about mm-hmm. the about the doc. So I enjoyed mm-hmm. him um, for sure. Um, but then, yeah, too, another thing about it, um, which you know, I guess like maybe we sort of vaguely knew, but. Um, is that after that initial meeting with George Lucas, you know, kind of being there and being involved in the creative process and all that, um, it was, you know, people who produced other variety shows who were the driving force behind, you know, creating this special. And it, it kind of makes a lot more sense when you look at it from that perspective. You know, mm-hmm. it wasn't like, wow, how did Lucasfilm screw this up so bad and make something so awful? Um it's really like Lucasfilm delivered here's Star Wars, you know, put it into one of your variety shows. Yeah. Um, but the people crafting it and creating it weren't Star Wars people. And so, you know, it feels like um, off brand or, um, you know, uh, unauthorized, like, you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't feel like Star Wars because it wasn't made by Lucasfilm. It wasn't really it was just made by people who didn't have really any connection to it. And it's not like they came in really so much saying like, okay, I'm going to make a star Wars. Now it was like, we're going to do what we always do, but we're going to put some star Wars dressing on it, you know, mm-hmm. um, some star Wars, um, you know, the look and f- the look and, and the characters and, and, and the costumes, but it's just going to be basically what we always kind of do with variety specials. I feel like. And, with a small amount of guidance from George Lucas. Like, yeah. um, like he did really want the Chewbacca's family stuff in there, but probably not in the way that it turned out in the holiday special. <laughs> yeah, there was some great editing in terms of, um, you know... Uh... <laughs> The, the documentary, like the, the way they cut some of that stuff together for, I guess, comedic effect. Um, mm. Cause yeah, there, there's some really, some wild moments with those, with those Wookiees. Um, but you know, like on that topic, we did learn that George, um, it seems like George wrote his own five page treatment for a one hour version of this special and that would have been I feel like if that would have been produced it would have been much closer to feeling like Star Wars people making a variety show instead of variety show people making a Star Wars thing you know Mm -hmm. Um, which by the way now when we get this kind of stuff it's much more the former it's like Star Wars and Lucasfilm making something in a different um, genre or making something in a different format rather than you know, just letting, um, you know, somebody who, 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 who does, uh, has, has a different specialty coming into a star Wars thing. So like, I'm thinking about like the Lego star Wars holiday specials and stuff like that, mm-hmm. you know, um, they obviously are not like in the super traditional mold of star Wars storytelling, but you can tell the people who are making it like love star Wars, they get star Wars. It's like, it, it's it's you're taking Star Wars and then you're making like a different form of it. Um, whereas, like I said, I know I'm repeating myself now, but it really feels like from watching this documentary that what happened here was variety show people making a variety show and then sprinkling some Star Wars into it. And I just feel like that would never happen now. You know, if we were to get another Star Wars holiday special, it would be Star Wars first, you know, and it would be Lucasfilm, you know, directing it and driving it and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, I still think there have been things that kind of uh, kind of walk the line um, between there. Because I think of like, you know, I guess this is more of like the, like, 
like mid to late 2000s which you know the late 2000s especially like star wars was in a very weird place pre-disney and you got stuff like the like the family guy star wars stuff and like robot chicken and those and like i don't know those don't quite those don't really feel like lucasfilm um handled (laughs) um work i think they they go a little too far in like the directions of like those you know those creations um Mm -hmm. but i yeah stuff stuff now like even you know like the like the the little simpson shorts that are on disney plus and stuff like that it does feel like in star wars visions i guess would be like a really good example of this like there is like a level of quality control where there's nothing happening that you're like, whoa, how did how did this slip by? Like, yeah, kind of thing. Well, and those are produced by Lucasfilm, and they go out and they hire animation studios and directors and and you know mm-hmm. whoever to produce these shorts for them. But they're they're the they're the ones. I mean, obviously they co-produce them with those studios and stuff. But like the the process is like we're gonna find you know at ten studios or whatever, and they're gonna pitch to us, and we might accept their pitch or we might not accept their pitch or you know, and if we might accept their pitch, but then we're gonna shift it or change it to make sure it fits into you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So it just it it definitely feels like that that quality control, for lack of a better term, is there and mm-hmm. um. It's probably not even how they did it with Robot Chicken and stuff like that, you know, X number of years ago. But but definitely, I think that feels like what they're doing now. So, um, mm-hmm. so yeah, that is a good example. Um, yeah. Uh, and also, um, you know, <laughs> one revelation for me, something I didn't know necessarily, um, is, uh, you know, learning more about these, these story meetings with... Um, Alan Dean Foster, you know, from mm. the, from the early, uh, seventies and, or, or mid seventies, I guess, but you know, uh, after star Wars was written, but before it came out and George, you know, talking about Chewbacca's family and the Wookiee planet and all that kind of stuff, like in 1976, I think, you know, they're talking about mm-hmm. some of these things that end up being part of the, the holiday special. Um, I'd probably read something about that. I think in the making of star Wars, I assume that would, that would have been in there, but, um, yeah, I thought that was pretty, definitely pretty interesting because like the the Wookiee family, Mala and Lumpy and all that is like one of the most, <laughs> I don't know, it, it's certainly probably the most memorable part of the holiday special, but it's it's so ridiculous. You know what I mean? It's so, so ridiculous. And it without that knowledge, it really would feel like, oh man, they these people don't know anything about Star Wars and they just came up with this goofy Wookiee family and... <laughs> I'm sure they made it a lot goofier than than it otherwise would have been, but like it's straight right. from George, straight from George. Yeah. yeah. Um I think one, one thing that um you know does get its due and you know, I kind of wish they would have went a little deeper on um is, you know, the sh- the shirt you're wearing, the the animated section where like I, I would say it's probably the the good standout part of the the holiday special. It's I, like the quote unquote best part. Um, it you know there's there's a lot of like mem- memorable stuff in the holiday special, but like th- it's like the only thing that I think is memorable for like mostly good reasons and. Um, I do like how, you know, there's all the way that it kind of leads up to discussing the animated part where it's like, you know, they're, they're taught in the documentary, it's talking about like the goofy Wookiee stuff and like grandpa watching VR porn and like some, for some reason, Jefferson Starship's here and, you know, B. Arthur. And then all of a sudden, then it's like, then there's this like pretty sweet animation section that like introduces Boba Fett and it's like, you know, inspired by Mobius and it's really, it's pretty good. And, Mm. you know, it's the, it's the first star Wars animation and 
um, in all of this. And, uh, you know, and then obviously the kind of lasting impact of that and the way, um, you know, you know, John Favreau is is a fan and um, you know incorporated stuff into Mandalorian that's like super iconic now and um, and yeah I don't know I think it was you know I wish they would have actually like went a little further into that like telling more about like who who are the the artists who is the animation studio that produced this like what did they done had what had they done before how did you know how did they you know get in contact like also like why is it kind of weird looking <laughs> like um you know what was what was happening here so um but i do i do like that 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 the animation section was at least um given its due sure yeah yeah um i respect that short i don't really enjoy it myself like it is not for mm -hmm. me i don't know it's some about the look of it and just mm -hmm. it's so 70s it's so to me it, it, it's like so aggressively 70s and like a really yeah. i don't know not a way that i'm super into um but I, I definitely think yeah but i do think i think you're right that it's like it's it, it, and this is not an uncommon opinion but i think it's like the the most like objectively like quality good you know component of the mm -hmm. it's the part that's not embarrassing right like it's the part that's not goofy it's the part that's uh i mean it's a little goofy there's a big purple dinosaur and stuff but you know overall i mean it's uh it is uh, yeah definitely the most respectable part but you know I, i'll take b arthur and uh is it art carney pouring yeah. uh was it art carney uh, pouring those beers into his head for some reason like you know i mm -hmm. i'll take that over the uh the <laughs> the 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 boba fett uh cartoon any day or the bubba fett cartoon as bruce valanche uh pronounces uh boba fett <laughs> i noticed yeah. too um uh, speaking but... about of b arthur something that yeah. was like fascinating um about this is like how how so many people showed up and were like okay i will do this star wars holiday special if I get to sing a song. <laughs> yeah, like, Carrie Fisher too, right? Yeah. Like that yeah. I don't know. I think there's something like just really endearing and of the era of that that that's like that's the that's the negotiation piece. It's not like you know, I'm sure there's discussions of money and everything, but it's like mostly like I want to be able to sing a song <laughs> in this thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, and she was like, B. Arthur, it sounded like, you know, she didn't um, really have any interest in the Star Wars part, but she had a lot of respect for the um, the husband and wife team who were kind of leading the production and mm -hmm. who wrote the song, you know, that she sang. And she, she seemed like, she, you know, looking back on it years later, she was pretty proud of the song, even though she didn't seem to care for the Star Wars, you know, yeah. kind of component of it. So, yeah. Yeah. Um also, Robin Williams um, apparently Ooh. was Man. maybe going to be cast in this, or, or you know, um, but the, those producers were were not uh, not interested. So that's uh, certainly a missed opportunity. Um, and uh, Favreau too. Um, I, I like the little clip they had of um, Dave Filoni talking to Favreau about Favreau, and they even had a clip of actually they had the clip of uh, Favreau talking to George. He's trying so to pop good. George. He's so trying to cringe. get, trying to excite George, and, and George so looks like it's in there. Yeah, George is like not really. He's like, oh, it's canon, mm -hmm. right? George's like not really, and you could just there's like this level of like, oh mm -hmm. god, man, we were having it's, such a good time until you like, <laughs> you know, it's um, so awkward. It's like an awkward like fan at a convention stepping up to the microphone at a panel to ask yeah. like the worst question and everyone's uncomfortable and it's i i love how like that that clip just is probably gonna haunt john favreau for <laughs> his entire life but it was like in an official lucasfilm thing so yeah like yeah in one of the behind the scenes documentaries or whatever right probably yeah yeah so. yeah yeah um 
you know, something else we have not talked about, which uh, we certainly should have brought up by now, is the fact that the um, late great J.W. Rinsler is um, mm-hmm. is featured in in the documentary, and I was uh, really happy to see um, him there. So mm-hmm. I don't know if I had heard that he would be in it or not, but um, yeah, I was really excited that uh, that that he was he was part of it. So um, obviously they've been filming for this for quite a while. Um, yeah, you know, so, um, but it was good to see him there and, and he made a great point towards the end of the documentary, um, which was, I, you know, I kind of mentioned earlier, but he, he pointed out that like at the time this aired, it was not necessarily this giant disaster that everybody was so embarrassed by. And, you know, mm-hmm. um, it, it wasn't this like albatross around everybody's neck at the time, because again, like you had brought up earlier, context is so important and, and, and uh, Rinsler, you know, makes that, that comment, uh, or makes, made a comment about that too, where, where he said that any art, you have to have the context and without that context, you know, you won't yeah. understand any, any, any art, you know? Yeah. So, um, you know, that's a, that's kind of a universal truth, um, that can be applied to, to this holiday special as well. And so, yeah, you know, having the, knowing that at the time there was stuff like this all over TV all the time, it wouldn't mm-hmm. necessarily have stood out that much as, you know, um, this major disaster or whatever. And uh, it was, I think, years later, obviously, that it, its reputation kind of grew and it became this this uh, this thing. And, and you know, kind of as you'd mentioned before, too, like so much of this stuff just kind of disappeared from everybody's memory and people don't watch it anymore or, or like have a have a reason to to look back at it the way they do because this is connected to star Wars. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, what do you think? Uh, I, I just kind of have maybe like one more note here, Ryan, one or two more notes. Um, mm-hmm. Pat Oswald make, makes a point towards the end of the documentary, um, that he doesn't think that Disney plus should release this holiday special. He doesn't think they should put it up on the service. Um, mm-hmm. he said basically because the bootleg component of it, the underground, have to seek it out, maybe get somebody to send you a tape or whatever. I mean, not so much anymore, but you know what I mean? Um, that component of it gives it a little more like mystique. And like, once you put it up on Disney plus or even, you know, sell an official Blu-ray of it or whatever, I think it does kind of lose something, um, in terms of being like a little more out of the way kind of star Wars, uh, you know, sort of thing, you know, um, it's like revenge of the Jedi. Like I remember when I first saw Revenge of the Jedi stuff at Celebration in '99, I was like, "What? Like, there's, there's like posters and stuff with this title on it. Like, this is crazy." And mm-hmm. you know, I have a Revenge of the Jedi shirt that uh, our friend Ian um, was nice enough to pick up for me at Celebration Europe this year, uh, and I love the shirt. But at the same time, it's like Revenge of the Jedi doesn't really have the mystique that it used to have because mm-hmm. it's just like. It's so like they bring it up all the time. They produce stuff with it on there all the time. They have um, legitimized it by making it like part of their official product offerings, you know. And I think doing that, I think that they, this kind of the point Pat Oswalt was making that doing that with this holiday special, um, you know, might might take a little bit of the the fun out of it. What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, I think it doesn't need to be on Disney Plus, and I think it would involves so much of an explanation (laughs) from (laughs) disney and you would have to have like one of those like title cards that they you know put up in front of like peter pan that's like this shit's racist like (laughs) just just so you know um but it's like (laughs) yeah they'd have to have some kind of like disclaimer to it and uh i think like and most people are not going to enjoy it like if you if you haven't seen it at this point um like if you haven't already sought this out like you're not going to enjoy it um and i think like it's very readily available on youtube um which you know is um 
you know, and it may not always be. So I guess there is like a, you know, I guess there is a case from like the preservation era, um, you know, that maybe it should be, you know, properly released on physical media because like there's only these like a handful of these like crappy copies of copies of VHS tapes around and like those are not going to exist someday and Disney could put up cease and desist orders and get it taken off YouTube and um, you know it would greatly decrease its availability um, over time but I don't know um, you know I don't know like I don't I don't ever want to like gatekeep something like this but at the same time it's like if if, if it's lost it's lost huh. <laughs> like well i don't think there's much danger of anything star wars really being lost you know what i mean there's so many there's so many people holding on to so much of this stuff that like i don't yeah. think it's going to be lost it, it might not be quite as easy to track down but it'll be there i mean in fact there's a really nice um 4k restored kind of version of it you know and it, it's yeah. it's like the it's like the quote-unquote original cuts of the original trilogy you know what i mean like you can get them it's not like they're they're you know and they'll they're i won't say they'll never release them uh legitimately again but they're certainly don't seem to have any plans to do that anytime soon but you know you want to tow? I can get you tow by this afternoon. You know what I mean? Like it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's not, it's not hard to track them down. You know what I mean? So, yeah. um, and, and I just think like with star Wars being so huge, I, I guess maybe 150 years from now, perhaps it could have disappeared, but I don't think so. I think it'll be, it'll be preserved regardless. So that's not too much of an issue, but you know, it, and when we're talking about, you know, I don't know me, like I, it's, it's hard for me to, to be dismissive of the holiday special after watching this documentary because again like i don't think the holiday special on its own is like a, gr a great artistic achievement or anything like super important to media history or anything but it is like again in like the context of the time it really does tell a lot about what entertainment televised entertainment was in the late 70s yeah and i think that is that part of it is actually important and also like star wars you know a new hope's just strange place in you know the this new era of blockbuster film um that it ushered in and i do think like like the star wars part of it is less important than the like media landscape of the time part of mm. it i think so in that sense like yeah it probably is something worth like making sure it's preserved for like that reason but you also really need the context so like mm -hmm. i think if um you know if lucasfilm was ever to do like a you know 4k blu-ray release of it um like i think you kind of need like this documentary like packed in to it yeah, that's interesting because, like, honestly, I've been thinking about it, and I'm probably a lot more likely to reach for this documentary if I want to, like, kind of experience the holiday special than I am mm -hmm. to, like, reach for the holiday special itself. Like, I think in yeah. 2023, it's more fun to watch this documentary for sure <laughs> than it is to watch the actual holiday special. You're going to get more out of it. Yeah. Too. Like. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, cool. So we both, uh, definitely both recommend it. Right. I mean, for, for interested, interested parties, it's a, it's a fun documentary. And, uh, I think, I think, um, a lot of value there. Uh,
you know, last thing I want to shout out, Ryan, or mention before we uh, wrap up our discussion of this uh, documentary um, is that Dan Didier of the Promise Ring and Maritime, you know, Promise Ring, a Milwaukee band. Ryan, we're both from Northern Illinois. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure, you know, like we were growing up at uh, at a time when the Promise Ring was um, a huge band for, for you know, us and, and people who like music mm -hmm. like we do. And uh, so, yeah, pretty cool to be um, watching the credits on this documentary and see um, his name, Dan Didier's name, uh, pop up. He was the post-production supervisor, and he had a couple other credits in there as well. So uh, that was pretty sweet. Yeah. 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 Um, yep. Another personal connection here um, is part of the documentary, um, one of the interview segments was shot at the Scum and Villainy Cantina in yeah. Los Angeles, um, which is a place I've been to, and that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, I've never been there yet. I'll have to check that out. Um, California Chris, of course, has been there numerous times. My little brother goes there pretty often, I think um because he lives out in la so that's cool um yeah and uh um yeah there was uh there was another connection as you brought that up now it's it's slipping my mind um hmm. i don't know but uh yeah i gotta get out there i gotta get out to the the scum and villainy cantina for sure mm -hmm. it's cool huh it's cool. yeah okay um, um oh. Okay, so like as we're kind of wrapping up this conversation, I wanted to get your take on, like, I, I think, I don't know, um, we're of two minds about whether the actual holiday special should be re-released, re and that's either going to happen or it's not. Um, but do you think uh, they should do another Star Wars holiday special? Like, yeah. Like Lucasfilm should do. I would love that. I would love that. I, I liked the the Lego Star Wars holiday special. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I would like that. Now, I will say this, though. Uh, I, I'm missing some context I need, or at least an example, um, because I haven't watched the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. Mm -hmm. But I heard that was pretty successful, right? Was it pretty... It was pretty good? Yeah. And uh, actually... Um... My friend Mike worked on that, and ah. uh, I'm embarrassed to say I have not. I have not actually watched it. Oh, you haven't seen it either. Okay, gotcha, mm -hmm. gotcha. Yeah, but he did. Um, he did work on that. No, I would love another. I would love another Star Wars holiday special. Um, I'm not sure how. I'm not sure how they would approach it. Like, I would love to see, like Daisy Ridley and Oscar Isaac, and you know John Boyega, and 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 those people like doing a holiday special especially if it was like interstitial segments with those characters and then they cut to like mm -hmm. different you know um variety quote-unquote segments i don't think it needs um you know dancing musical numbers and stuff like that but i could totally see um a fun and lighthearted holiday special but not quite so over the top and ridiculous and goofy Okay, not not even not quite so not nearly as over the top and ridiculous and goofy, but still have like a playful spirit and not be mm -hmm. like super embarrassing to Star Wars and the characters and stuff like that, you know. And they they certainly have done like canon adjacent, you know, things with Lego and and uh, you know, stuff like that. So yeah, I think they I think they totally should. I think it would be really fun. Um maybe the moment's passed a little bit right now though, you know, because there's not I think it would have been great. I don't know, actually. I don't know what it would look like. I was going to say it would have been great during the sequel trilogy era, but those movies, they took those movies so seriously that it would be hard to imagine them doing that, like in between The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker. Like, oh, we're going to have Daisy Ridley, you know, goofing around on set. I don't, I don't know if they would do yeah. that, you know. Um, But I don't know. I think just to just randomly do it, without it being without there being like a vital kind of like era in star I I wouldn't really I don't think we're really in like a vital era of Star Wars right now. Um mm -hmm. you know, I don't know, that might be like maybe that's a bold statement, but 
in the first year or two of like Disney plus like Mandalorian season one and two, maybe that felt kind of vital, but now I feel like we're, we're in a really like, it's a really nice era, you know, of like mm-hmm. a lot of great star Wars TV shows and stuff, but it doesn't feel like it has this major identity to me anyways. Like, the couple of year period where the prequels were coming out or the couple of years where the sequels were coming out or, you know what I mean? Like it kind of ebbs and flows and um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know when the right time to do it would be or what the right way to do it would be, but I would love it. Yeah. I mean, I think even in like the context of the original trilogy, like the only time to do it was in 1978. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think you could have, done a holiday special in 1981 like i don't think it would have worked in the same way like post empire strikes back um it 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 would have felt like really off i think um yeah so yeah it is you know it is a, a matter of timing um something that this whole thing got me thinking of um is uh what I would love to see happen with Star Wars, like even outside of like the holiday context, is I would love like s- something Star Wars that is like a really earnest musical and like not a like, hey, we're singing because it's hilarious kind of thing super meta that, like, like not super meta yeah yeah like like wink wink nudge nudge but so um i think i've probably talked about this on the show and you know um, among friends as well i'm a huge fan of the the frozen duology of films and um you know i this is like i'm not like a super holiday guy but you know around this time of the year I like to, uh, you know, listen listen to a little Frozen music, and I've got both of the soundtracks on vinyl, and I was, you know, listening to them the other day, and I was like, and I just watched this documentary, and I was like, it would be cool if there was something like Star Wars like this, and like those, those films, like, people are not singing songs because it's hilarious to start singing a song like there's some like goofy musical numbers like Olaf songs and stuff but generally like the songs are like the powerful part of the film and like the super emotional part of the film and it like taps into this like really just raw earnest you know um thing like part of you know the the combination of like storytelling and music and i would love to see star wars do something like that at some point and i don't know how anyone how they would pull it off or who would do it or what the context would be but i think it is kind of strange that there uh there hasn't really ever been um, something like that and you know and it's you know t- t- like tv shows have done this like there's like a, a musical episode of buffy the vampire slayer there was recently a musical episode of um one of the one of the new star trek shows and hmm. it is interesting that that's never really happened in star wars especially because music is such a huge part of star wars maybe not necessarily like vocal themes but like the other thing that was kind of like feeding into this whole thing um with me as well was i just started rewatching ahsoka and i watched the first episode and there's that amazing song when sabrine wren is on the motorcycle with um you know this the singer f- from illuminati hotties and um and it's like man it's it's weird we don't get like we just don't get like that kind of like music into in star wars 
Um, and there's been like a lot of experimentation with music. I think, you know, the, the score for like the Mandalorian was kind of like a game changer and like, Oh, Star Wars music can also be this. Um, and I don't know. I think like the, the floodgates are starting to open and I'm, I'm wondering if something like that is in the future. Cause I think it could be like extremely cool. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, um, very interesting idea there, Ryan. I, uh, I could s- kind of see it the way you describe it, you know? Um, it's not something I've ever thought about, but maybe, maybe. I feel like animated for sure. I could see it working mm-hmm. on an animated level for sure. Um, but uh, maybe I just don't have the vision for like the live action. Or it just maybe it just needs to be the right Star Wars project or the right kind of like Star Wars characters for mm-hmm. it to work, you know? Um, and I'm sure they're they're out there, but uh, in a live action setting, you know. Um, yeah, like like what I picture live action. Okay, I've I've actually thought about this a ton. <laughs> um, so li- like on the live action side of things, like I'm um, also a big Hamilton fan. Um, I've, you know, seen it seen it live, um, and you know, listen to the soundtrack and everything. And I think like you know that style of musical where you are like you're telling like a sequential story and um i don't know i i feel like something like that and there's like there's humor for sure but also it's like this is like a deadly serious story and it's also like it's a musical but it's also like pretty cool and like it's music that like you know, I would, I, I listen to when I'm driving my car and stuff. So I think like an approach like that, um, could, could work as well. Well, I think it'd be really cool if they just straight up did a star Wars musical, like live theater, musical theater. Yeah. You know what I mean? That would be cool. Yeah. That I would, I would actually love that. And that I think like, cause you're, you're stepping into that world and in doing a star Wars version of it, you know? And I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, and I'm not opposed to trying to work musical, you know, more of a musical theater approach into like a live action, you know, film TV, star Wars thing. But that seems like more of a, uh, a tricky line, you know what I mean? To make Mm -hmm. that work, but to just say, Hey, we're going to produce a musical inspired by star Wars, you know, uh, a star Wars musical, and have that performed, you know, cause that would be, I mean, cause it would also be a cool event. That would be something fun to like, you know, um, to, to, to get to, like if they were doing it in New York, like, man, I, for mm-hmm. an extended period of time, like I would find a way to get out to New York to go to that. And I feel like that could be a really fun, um, you know, fun kind of thing. And, and, you know, if you do it on TV or in, in a, you know, film version or whatever, man, the, the level of scrutiny and the level of, I don't know, just the discourse around it's going to be <laughs> its its own challenge. You know what I mean? Um, on its own. But if it, if it was like in that world and, uh, you know, it just a musical, but you know, Star Wars, I feel like the, a lot of that would be avoided right from the, you know, from the get go. Right. Cause people who don't want to go to a musical, you know, theater, they're not going to, you know, it is Pay what it is. Two hundred dollars for a ticket. To... Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, but if it's on TV or in a movie theater, then everyone's gonna go. And then you know what I mean. It's it's I don't know. I think it's a tougher sell in that regard. It is, and uh, I don't know. Like I think I think making making musicals is one of like the the ballsiest things you can do in entertainment, and I think it's why so often when you know, when they are working with, like, established properties or something, it's, like, you know, it, it's just so much easier to take the, we're just going to make fun of this kind of approach. Mm. Like, we're going to sing because it's stupid and it's funny and it sucks and everyone's in on the joke. Um, because, but, like, doing, like, an earnest musical especially with 
um, established properties and for like a broad audience is like it's it's wild it's so hard it's so hard to to pull off and that's why you know there there isn't a, a lot of it out there so um, yeah. and it's also such an acquired taste too like it is it is not for everyone um but it's i don't know i think if 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 the right people were involved and they just like really leaned into it and were really thoughtful about it and the idea was like really good i think i think it would be awesome yeah 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 Okay, well, uh, those listening, you know, if you guys have any thoughts on Star Wars musicals or if you uh, are into Ryan's, Ryan's idea here, we'd love to, uh, to hear your thoughts on that. I'm, I'm curious what others would, uh, would think about that or what kind of interest um, there is from the, the larger Star Wars community in a Star Wars musical. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, and Ryan, you mentioned um, that you're rewatching Ahsoka. I really need, like, I've, I've been wanting to watch rewatch Ahsoka. I feel like my first time watching the show, I didn't really give it the level of attention that I should have, that it deserved. I was like Mm -hmm. too distracted and too tired and just, I really couldn't, Mm -hmm. I didn't watch it the way I should have watched it. Um, part of it Mm -hmm. too is because we weren't doing the podcast. Um, and so like when we're doing the podcast, I'm watching the show, the, the episodes multiple times and, and, and trying to get ready for, for Mm -hmm. doing a recording. And I didn't have that either. So, um, I need, incentive's not the right word because i like i'm incentivized i want to watch it but i feel like i need like some pressure to rewatch yeah. ahsoka so if you're rewatching it um mm-hmm. and uh we're back to recording um somewhat regularly then i think i'm gonna i'm gonna you know make that my motivation and uh and try to rewatch the ahsoka series here so maybe we can do a uh, an episode um about the show overall soon coming up um how's that mm-hmm. sound that sounds great like i you know now that i'm i'm on winter break it's been a pretty wild year for me like we did Mm. talk about like how we were off the podcast due to um the strike and everything but also it has been kind of a relief for me because it has been one of the busiest and most challenging years in recent memory um for me um specific mostly just because of like my my job and work stuff um but uh yeah like it was kind of the first thing i did when i just like got on break i was like i feel like you know revisiting the show um because again like when i was watching it like i was stressed and tired and um didn't have like a lot of capacity to like engage in conversations or anything um ab- about the show but i really liked it and surprisingly so and then going back and like starting my rewatch now um it's like even better um it it really does like the the best way i can describe like how the show makes me feel is like To me, it doesn't, like, I know it is, like, technically a sequel to Rebels, but to me, the show feels like, like, watching the prequels. Like, everything, like, good and bad about the prequels is in this show, and I don't know, it really, like, takes me back to that era, weirdly enough. Um, And so, yeah, I've been, um, you know, I started my rewatch, and I also started rereading the um, the original Timothy Zahn uh, trilogy. Um, I started Heir to the Empire um, to kind of see how the show sort of lines up um, with those books. And uh, yeah, there's a you know there's a a lot of a lot of similarities. <laughs> a lot a lot that was you know in in the show that was inspired by. Uh, by those books so yeah it's been a it's been a really enjoyable um kind of experience for sure cool cool okay well uh we'll um we'll uh plan on doing an episode related to ahsoka here um sometime soon how much longer are you on break for ryan how how, how big of a break do you get uh 
until January January second is when I go back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Nice. Cool. Um, I'm not on break yet. I'm going to start break on Saturday, I guess. Is uh, mm. yeah. So, um, but I'll be I'll be on break until January eighth as a result of the late start. So that'll be nice. Yeah. Cool. But cool. All right. Uh, well. Maybe uh, we'll wrap the show up here, Ryan, uh, but we have a plan for another episode, so that's good. And then we'll see mm-hmm. where uh, <laughs> where the galaxy far, far away takes us after that, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> all right. Um, so thank you very much for listening. And, uh, it, you know, especially if you're hearing this, that means you stayed subscribed to the show or you're following us in some capacity to know this is even here. So, yeah. Um, yeah, thanks for listening, and hopefully we'll be we'll be putting out episodes a little more frequently here uh, in 2024. Um, until then, if you want to reach out to the show, you can email us at uh, blockaderunnerpodcast at gmail dot com. Um, you can follow the show on Blue Sky and Instagram, Blockade Runner Podcast. You'll find us, um, and. Uh, we also have a Discord you can join um, if you want to pop in there and uh, talk to a few of us who are, um, you know, involved in the show and, and friends as a result of the show. So that's pretty cool and, and pretty fun um, and a good place to talk about Star Wars, hopefully, um, in the new year when things um, kick back into gear. We'll see. Um, yeah. So um, we're, we're around. We'd love to hear from you. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ryan, you're on Blue Sky all over blue sky yeah um, standard definition gaming uh via malay is my personal account on there and then red ring of light life is another account that i run on blue sky so all over all over there yeah you um you have a new uh, a, a, a new direction in your career, Ryan. You leveled up in terms of your 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 career, but uh, you also in the last year have become this um, visionary, this social media visionary, where you keep creating these viral accounts, um, which <laughs> really cool. Um, you know, people end up following, and and uh, you uh, you've um, you've you've like managed to pull that off a couple times in a row. So that's pretty cool to see. Yeah, yeah, I do like um, posting and talking about things that I like. It is a it is a great uh, a great es- escape and a great way to connect with people. And yeah, right on, right on. All right, so thanks for listening. We'll be back soon with another episode of the Blockade Runner Podcast. 